I've got a deck where Sahili Sublime Artificer is going to make it go boom. Stay tuned. Hello, kind patrons of the internet, and welcome back to the Signature Spellbomb YouTube channel. Today, I'm covering a Sahili Sublime Artificer deck that I played on a recent Oathbreaker stream. Check out the video on the channel if you have a sec. I would appreciate it. So our commander this time, oop. So our commander this time is Sahi, Sahili, the Sublime Artificer for one and a, we'll say, is it, is it? She's a legendary five loyalty planeswalker that whenever we cast a non-creature spell, we make a 1-1 one, one servo. Keep that in mind. It's going to be important. Three minus two or target artifact we control becomes a copy of another target artifact or creature we control till end of turn, except it's an artifact in addition to its other types. There is some Strange synergies that pop up in a deck every once in a while with that ability. Our signature spell is Explosive Singularity. For 8 and 2 red, it will deal 10 damage to any target. And we may tap creatures we control to reduce the cost of this spell by 1 for each creature spent to tap it. A way to look at this deck is every time we cast a spell, we're going to basically ramp one just for this spell because Sahili is going to take our non-creature spells and basically turn them into a 1-1 one, one mana producing creature for us. There are no other creatures in this deck other than the tokens Sahili produces because I am a madman. This is actually a nonsense vehicle deck that I really love playing and I hope you guys enjoy it as well. Let's get into the cards, though. So first off, we have Jace Cunning Castaway for one in two blue. He's a three loyalty planeswalker. Whenever, if we plus one him, whenever one or more creatures we control deal combat damage, we draw a card, then discard a card. If we minus to him, we create a two, two blue illusion creature token with this creature uh, becomes target of spell or ability, sacrifice it. And if we minus five of him, we create two token copies of him. So he can help create enough 2-2 two -two tokens along with Sahili's 1-1 one -one tokens to drive our cars, and that's really one of the main reasons he's in here. Next we have Sarkhan the Masterless, revealing another reason why maybe Jace is in here. For 3 and 2 red, he's a 5 loyalty planeswalker that says whenever a creature attacks us or a planeswalker we control, each dragon we control is going to deal 1 damage to that creature. This is a good like pillow fort card to keep people from maybe targeting us too early or too often. Every plus 1 him. Each Planeswalker we control becomes a 4-4 red dragon creature with flying. If we minus 4 him, he becomes... Yeah, sorry, if we minus 3 him, we create a 4-4 red dragon creature token with flying. We're also running Tybalt, Rakish Instigator. For 2 and a red, he prevents our opponents from gaining life, and we can minus 2 him to make 1-1 one, one devils, so that when they die, they deal 1 damage to any target. Ugin the Ineffable for 6 mana makes all of our colorless spells cost 2 less to cast. And we're running a bunch. His minus 1 is makeshift draw, and in that it makes a 2-2 two -two spirit token, and when that spirit token dies, we get to return an exiled card that he exiled earlier to our hand. So making 2-2s two to drive our cards, but also killing those 2-2s two can get us card advantage. We minus three him, we destroy target permanent that's one or more colors. That can be important in many games. For one blue, we have Ultra Artful Dodge. It's going to make a creature we control unblockable, and we can flash this back for one mana. So this is a great way to get our final points of damage through to end a player, but it's also a really great way to create two of their so servos if we need to just get ahead or get a little bit of extra mana. Blasphemous Act for 8 and Red is going to cost 1 less to cast for each creature on the battlefield, and it deals 13 damage to each creature. This is another big way for us to keep the board clear. We get to keep our Planeswalkers and our vehicles, and then we can remake a small army and attack again. Chain Reaction for Tune 2 Red deals X damage to each creature, where X is the number of creatures on the battlefield. We're playing this for the very same reason we're playing Blasphemous Act. Fortune Strike for one blue gives a creature plus one plus O and makes it unblockable. And then it rebounds and does that again the next turn. It is a sorcery, so you can't really play this as, as any sort of trick, but you don't really need to. The Dolter Rebirth for one red is going to let us sacrifice an artifact to create three 1-1 one, one red goblin creature tokens. 
again, we're uniquely situated to do that. Even paying one red and casting this will make us a servo that we can sacrifice to make three one one red goblins. Plan our incision for one in a red is going to let us exile target artifact or creature and then return to the battlefield under its owner's control with a 1-1 one, one counter on it. We do have some interesting targets for that, actually. Prismari Command for 1-A blue and a red. We get to choose any two of these abilities to deal two damage to any target, to have target player draw two cards and then discard two cards, to create a treasure token, or to destroy target artifact. This is removal, ramp, and card advantage all on one card, so it's definitely worth our running. Deferi's Time Twist for one and a blue lets us exile target permanent we control, and we turn that to the battlefield letter its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. So the creature gets a 1 1 counter. Cultivator's Caravan is a 5 5 vehicle for 3 mana that we can tap for 1 mana of any color, and it crews for 3. So it's ramp and a big beater. First mirror for two and a red. It taps for red. When it enters the battlefield, it can become a copy of any creature on the battlefield till end of turn, except it has haste. This is a fun little piece where we can basically steal somebody else's big beater for a turn without actually stealing it, but, you know, copying it and swinging. So it is ramp and it is a body. But we'll cruiser for four mana is a 5-3 trample haste vehicle that crews for two that the first turn enters the battlefield. It's automatically crewed, basically. General Longboat for two is a 3-3 three, three with Vigilance that we can crew for one, so it's a really good rate. If we cast this with Sahili out, it's going to make the one creature it needs to crew it, so good thing to keep in mind. Honeymoon Hearse for two and a red is a 5-5 five, five trample creature that doesn't really have a crew cost. We just can tap any two untapped creatures we control. Mecha Titan Core, which is in this deck for, I think, pretty obvious reasons, is a 2-2 two, two for 5 uh, colorless. We can exile Mecha Titan Core and 4 other artifact creatures or vehicles we control to make a legendary 10-10 construct artifact creature token with flying, vigilance, trample, lifelink, and haste, and it's all colors. When that token leaves the battlefield, we turn all cards exiled with Mecha Titan's Core except Mecha Titan's Core to the battlefield tapped under their owner's control. It is usually a 2-4 vehicle that crews for two. That is a lot of things this one card does. I have one off of the back of that 10-10 before, but also blinking our own 10-10 can cause, cause four things to blink back into the battlefield and maybe cause some other chaos. Mizium Tank for one and two red is a 3-2 with Trample that whenever we cast a non-creature spell, it becomes an artifact creature and gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. And a cruise for one. This is by far one of the easiest things for us to crew and get much use out of. The fact it has trample is nice. Mobilizer mech is a one in a blue three four flying vehicle that crews for three. When it becomes crewed, we basically get to free crew another vehicle we have. So a lot of these we these. Things we have that will crew themselves or crew something else are really here to make sure if we don't have enough creatures to crew our mechs, we can still attack. And in a Prosperity, cost three. When enters the battlefield, we give it to an opponent. Whenever that opponent would pay two and tap it, they draw a card and put a land and may put a land from their hand onto the battlefield. And then we get to do the same. So a couple of cards I put in this deck simply for the point that they're going to have effects on politics at the table and maybe cause some fun interactions. I could have probably gone with a better card draw thing, but this just felt more fun to me. Raider's Car for three is a 4-4 four, four vehicle that crews for three. Whenever it attacks, we can look at the top card of our library. If it's a land, we can put it on the battlefield tap. So just another piece of ramp. Reckoner Bank Buster for two is a 4-4 four, four that crews for three. When it enters the battlefield, it has three charge counters on it. If we tap two and tap it, we can remove one of those counters and draw a card. And then if there's no counters on it, we make a treasure token and a 1-1 one, one pilot token that can crew as if it was uh, value 3. Power 3, I should say. Silent Submersible for 2 blue is a 2-3 vehicle. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player or planeswalker, we draw a card. Crews for 2. This is one of those things we may want to make unblockable if we're really hurting for cards or card advantage to just push through the game. Smuggler's Copter for 2 colorless is a flying 3-2. A cruise for one, whenever it attacks or blocks, we can draw a card. If we do, we discard a card. 
Surge Hackermech for four is one of the best damage spells in the deck and definitely a good blink target for some of the things I mentioned earlier. It is a 5-5 five, five menace vehicle that crews for four. When it enters the battlefield, it deals damage equal to twice the number of vehicles you control the target creature or planeswalker on opponent controls. So the fact that we can hit planeswalkers with this is also really good as a removal spell goes. Tempting Contract for four is another one of these cards that's in here more for the fun of it. At the beginning of your upkeep, each opponent may create a treasure token. For each opponent who does, you create a treasure token. So each turn, when it comes to our turn, we might get up to three treasure tokens, or we might get nothing. It really just depends on how our opponents are feeling. It just felt like a fun politics card to have. Uh, for two mana, we have Throne of the God Pharaoh. At the beginning of our end step, each opponent loses life equal to the number of tapped creatures we control. Since we are playing a vehicle deck, it is not impossible to tap down a whole slew of creatures at the end of each turn just to do maximum damage. Thundering Chariot for four mana is a 3-3 vehicle with First Strike, Trample, and Haste, and Cruise for one. That is a lot of things this does. Definitely one of my favorite vehicles in the deck. Wedding Invitation for two. When it enters the battlefield, we draw a card, and we can sacrifice to make a creature unblockable. And in here for the same reason as the other unblockable spells. Goblin Assault for two in red is going to give us a 1-1 red goblin token every single one of our upkeeps. It's going to have haste, and they have to attack each combat if able, but since we have cars, we don't actually have to attack with them. Impact Tremors for one in red says whenever a creature enters the battlefield under our control, it'll deal one damage to each opponent. Since we're going to be making a bunch of 1-1 servos off of Sahili's ability, simply because we don't have any spells that aren't non-creature spells in the deck, plus everything else that makes counters, this is probably going to be pretty useful to us throughout the course of a game. Eyes Revolution for two in red says whenever... A non-token artifact we put into a graveyard from the battlefield, we get to return to our hands unless an opponent cho chooses to take three damage. It's a really good recursion for the deck. It's kind of pseudo-protection because it helps us get back a lot of our artifacts. If an opponent doesn't want us to get back something, they have to pay the price, which makes this, I think, one of the more fun cards to play in a red artifact-centric deck. Castle Embereth. Enters the battlefield tapped unless we control a mountain. We can tap for red, or we can pay some mana and tap it to basically anthem all of our creatures by plus one plus O oh until the end of a turn. Command Tower is Command Tower. <laughs> Exotic Orchard will only tap for mana of a color our opponent's land can produce, but you're very likely going to run into blue at an Oathbreaker table, so don't feel like this is an impossible or bad card at all. If it gives us one of our colors or both, that's great. It's often going to give us both. You'd be surprised how often. Fabled Passage is in here because I happen to have one. You do not have to run one. It just lets us sacrifice it to search our library for basic land card. It'll enter the battlefield tapped unless we control four more lands, in which case we have to untap it. Crossboil Snar taps for a white, uh, sorry, a blue or red, and it will enter the battlefield untapped if we reveal a mountain or island from our hand. In our Planetary Beacon, whenever we cast a Planeswalker spell, we gain one life. We can tap it for colorless, or we can pay one and tap it to generate two mana of different colors that we can only spend to cast Planeswalker spells. So this ramps us, but just for Planeswalkers. We are, of course, running some islands, and we'll be running some mounts too, but we'll get to them later. Mecha Hanger is taps for colorless, taps to spend colored mana to four pilots or vehicles, and it can be used to pilot a vehicle. And then we've got Otawara, the Soaring City. This is just a really good land. I don't really have to say a lot about this. I think most people realize these new channel lands are amazing. Again, you don't have to run this. You can replace it with an island. This is just the deck that I built with the cards I have. And finally, Sokozin, Crucible of Defiance. See previous statement. Uh, Steam Vents. It's a shock land, so we can have Interplay untapped. It'll tap for either of our colors if we pay two life. Storm Carved Coast enters the battlefield tap unless we control two more other lands. Surt Land Frostpire is a board wipe that will scry us two cards but deals two damage to each creature. So this mini board wipe, just one other of those cards in the deck that I snuck into the mana base. And that's all the cards. So having seen all the cards in the deck, I really want to get you guys' opinion made this far into the video please remember to like share and subscribe it really does help me 
grow the Oathbreaker format and my community. If you do enjoy what I do, you can become a, when you become a subscriber, I'll try to add your name to this list and scroll on by in the bottom. My patrons who, my patrons who I love the most are up here in the corner. If you want to join this list, name Dealey Bopper. There's going to be links below in the, we'll say doobly-doo or description, whatever. Also put a video up on screen here for people. Ooh, where are we? Four people. That is either going to be another deck tech or related video that I think you guys could really benefit from. Thanks again for uh, dropping in, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.